I'm Dan Persons, and this is my Hour of the Wolf review. 30 seconds into the first live-action TV series set in the Star Wars universe, The Mandalorian, a door dilates. Maybe that means nothing to you, but since the focus of Hour of the Wolf is largely literary science fiction, I'm guessing you recognize that that phrase, the door dilated, is frequently cited as something that can only be understood within the context of a science fiction story. It's credited originally to Robert Heinlein, and Samuel Delaney is most famous for having referenced it, although he says Harlan Ellison got there first. But the fact that it figures in this TV show raises an interesting question. I haven't seen the script for the first episode of The Mandalorian where this happens, but I'm strongly convinced that writer Jon Favreau, who also co-produces the series, wrote that exact phrase, the door dilates. If he did, it gives us an insight into where he's coming from, and it turns out to be a place with a greater understanding of science fiction than I would have thought, and maybe what he's hoping to do with this series. It must be said that the first two episodes of The Mandalorian are beautiful. They'd have to be. Disney is betting the moisture farm on their new streaming service, Disney+, Plus, and The Mandalorian is meant to be the killer app that's going to tempt anyone who doesn't have five-year-olds at home to pony up $7 a month for the privilege. Director Dave Filoni, who actually comes out of animation, he worked on Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Star Wars Rebels, among others, and also produces, puts all the money up on the screen, creating an amazingly lush, lively, and detailed universe, at least as palpable, and maybe more, than the feature films. As for the story, we're only two shows into a season-long arc, so what we've got to judge on is mostly atmosphere and the beats that are contained within each episode. But at least each episode feels like a self-contained adventure, which is good. It's obvious Favreau is leaning heavily on the influence of Sergio Leone's Spaghetti Westerns for the series' overall outlook, an easy enough reach given that the show focuses on a hardened bounty hunter played by Pedro Pascal, who never removes his helmet or body armor. But that's a bit of a problem since we're tasked with identifying with a lead character who doesn't give us much in terms of body language and whose dialogue, along with the dialogue of the series overall, is pretty damn colorless. Surprising since this is coming from the guy who wrote Swingers. If you're going to make your protagonist that laconic, you've got to give us at least a face to look at. What Favreau is relying on mostly is exciting action sequences, which Filoni skillfully delivers in abundance, and tons of inside references to trip those Star Wars endorphins. Jawas and Ugnaughts show up. There are fleeting glances of Kowakian monkey lizards roasting on spits, and good for them, they deserve it, and even a passing invocation of Life Day, because I guess Favreau was feeling especially mischievous at that moment. What I'm saying is that if your beef with the new Disney Star Wars features was that they leaned too heavily on fond memories of the original trilogy, you will probably be just as annoyed, if not outright incensed, by The Mandalorian. If you can set that aside, though, these first two episodes, flat dialogue notwithstanding, are pretty damn entertaining. The balancing of practical and computer-generated effects is well considered, and the main setup, which appears to center around the Mandalorian, nobody has names in this, by the way, at least not yet, but it involves the Mandalorian retrieving and protecting a baby Yoda Sorry, I checked. Turns out Yoda has no established species to describe him. The character here looks downright kittenish, though. Some clever work from the animatronics guys. Anyway, the main setup holds promise. Following suit with CBS All Access, Disney is releasing these episodes on a weekly basis, so if you're motivated enough to follow along, you're pretty much committed to two months' worth of fees. I guess I'm in for the duration. The Mandalorian looks like it's going to be fun. More fun than Discovery ever was. And who knows, maybe he'll take off that helmet eventually. 
Seriously, John Favreau, consider it. It'll help, trust me, and Pedro Pascal will thank you. For Hour of the Wolf, I'm Dan Persons.